All right, welcome back. Today, we're gonna be doing about triggers and how to connect triggers into our objects. So let's begin. Inside Unigine, there's actually only three types of triggers that we can use. One is a node type trigger, the other one is a physical type trigger, and the third one is a world type trigger. Each of them actually have two events. For node, we have the enable and position, so whenever an object moves or gets enabled, we have triggers for that. Now as for physical and world, we only actually have the same, which is enter and leave when it comes in and goes out of the objects. So let's check it out. The first one we're gonna check out is the node trigger. So what we're gonna do is just right click and go into logic and we'll have all three of the triggers here. So for our case, we'll take the node trigger and what we're gonna do is just add it to the node that we want the events on and reset it. In terms of code, what we are going to do is create a new component, have a trigger inside it. We're gonna have the node, a node trigger and a label to just show the changes for our sake. Now in terms of coding, we're only going to be having a few things and we're only going to show the positioning. So the first thing we're going to do is whenever it moves, we're just going to update the label to show the position and inside our init function, we're going to be creating that label and adding it to the GUI and then we're going to be connecting the node trigger and connecting the event. And then for shutdown is just to remove the label. We're going to be talking about GUI later. So after doing that, we can see that whenever the node moves in any position, we get the updated position and we get it changing onto the label every time it moves. Very simple, very easy. Now, as for physical triggers, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going into the physical trigger and it's going to be a certain type of area that we can change it to so let's just create it into a specific area and we can choose it to a specific size or a specific shape for easy calculations box is the preferred option and we just have it set up so that's how physical triggers do work now the next thing we're going to be doing is actually going into the object that we want the trigger to be on we're going to first enable the type of physics and we're going to be enabling uh, shapes you do have to enable collisions too and box is the easiest to calculate so we use that so after setting everything up in our code we're going to be adding two functions one is the inter enter and leave physical where it takes the body argument and it uh, replies back from there now what we can actually do is we can use lambda functions or we can use regular functions to connect our objects into it about the same as how we did it before after trying it out we can see that the moment we enter in that box we see that it is updated our logs to saying that the physics has actually entered and left our object very simple very easy as for world, we actually will be doing about the same as we did before. We're gonna be opening the logic, going into the world trigger. We're gonna be adding it in the same spot or a bit ahead of it. And we are also going to be enabling touch based on it. Touch means the moment you touch it, it is activated. So in terms of material, there's only one little thing that we need to do is we trigger interaction enabled. It's dis disabled by default. So that is about everything we can do. Now in terms of the coding, it's almost similar to the physical code, except instead of the uh, body pointer that we add into our argument, we're gonna be adding a node pointer into the argument or a node into the argument. And we can do a Lambda function or we could do a regular uh, reference function, whichever one works for you, however you like, there is no difference for it. It works all the same. Now, as we see inside it, the moment we touch the object or go inside the area or outside the area, the event gets updated in the log and we can use that to our advantages however we like. Now, there is one more thing that we can do. Let's say we wanted to change the event or enable and disable it whenever we like. And to do that, we actually need something called an event connection to which we connect our event 
into the event connection and that allows us to move it. So once we connected it into our function trigger events, we can actually use it to enable or disable the object. And with that, we can actually choose when the event should launch or not. So using the exact same sample, when we go in and out, you could see that everything is normal. And the moment we change the event, like the enter event, now the enter is not being registered, but the leave is. And we could do the same for the leave where we change it to disable and now the events are not being called out. But the moment we can press it again and we have them enabled and we have everything set up. All right, I hope you guys liked this video. Next video is going to be about GUI and I believe that will be all in terms of basics. So until then, I will see you guys next time. All right, goodbye.